Hello, beloved brethren. We are in the book of Hebrews, which is to the Hebrews. Um, and first I want to say that in um, 2 Timothy, I think it is where it is, it says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished, unto all good works. And so God gave us this great book. We give him all the praise, honor, and glory. This book is what Isaiah said that we're to read during this time. Um, and so uh, this is very important, um, even though this particular book was to the Hebrews for that time. Um, it is, if you're grafted into um, Israel, if you were a Gentile, which Gentile means nations and it and it, God's children are spread over all four corners of the earth and they are in every nation tribe and tongue so uh, with that I want to say that that this is scripture is going to I'm going to read it to you about who who Jesus is and how he's on David's throne so and he is a scepter of righteousness praise his name so it says um, in, let's see, let's read the whole thing. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. There's that whole part I was doing in the Word of God uh, series. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things. Okay, he's the heir of all things. <laughs> guys this is big by whom also he made the worlds so this right here proves that the son is how god made the worlds and the son we know is the word of god so and he was made manifest and who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, praise his name, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son, praise the Lord. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the son, he saith, My, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. So the oil is very important in this. Um, so let's keep going. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of, his, of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as doth a garment. We look for new heaven and new earth, brethren, wherein dwelleth what? Righteousness. That's where the Lord is, his scepter of righteousness. Okay, so all of this, um, this stuff that the wicked are doing, it says the wicked will be no more. They will be like a dream. Okay, they won't be with us in a righteous kingdom. We'll be in the righteous kingdom. Praise the Lord. And this is his kingdom of righteousness. We give him all the praise, honor, and glory. Okay, so, and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up. And he folded his garment up and laid it at the, at the the um, in the tomb. That was uh, telling us that he's coming back. And he's coming back in the sky and in the cloud. And they shall be changed. This is great news. We're going to be changed. And since we are his body, we are his vesture. Okay. 
it, and he that means he's coming back for us, brethren. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not f fail. But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? He's going to make his enemies his footstool. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Those angels are to minister to those who are heirs of salvation. Those who are heirs of everlasting destruction, they're not to be ministering to them, okay? The wicked, no, they're not part of the kingdom. They have not believed our report. Okay, so it says, um, so he has laid his foundation and um, Jesus, oh, is it in the next one? Is it in? Jesus worked outside serving the tabernacle. Okay, so here it is. Um, uh, where is that part? Hold on just a second. I think it is in 6. Luke 6? Yeah, I believe that's in Luke 6. So let's go to Luke 6. Yeah, I think it's in Luke 6. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Luke 6. We're going to go to Luke 6 now. Praise his name, guys. This is such great news. What you're going to see, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. So, praise his name. 46. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings, and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built an house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that home, that house, and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock praise his name but he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that with that without a foundation built an house upon the earth against which the stream and did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great so we know there is going to be a ruin of the house of those who do not build their their house on the rock, Jesus Christ. And the foundation, um, it says, talks about the foundation. The foundation being the apostles and the prophets. Praise the Lord. Okay, now we're going to go to, because Jesus is the rock. Second Kings, we're in Second Kings 8.21. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So 821, right? So he smote the Edomites, which compassed him. Okay, so in the book of Revelation, it talks about they compass the camp of the saints. Okay, things are not going to go down the way that the enemy thinks it's going to go down. Let's just say that. And smote the Edomites, which compassed him about. And the captains of the chariots and the people fled into their tents. Yet Edom revolted from under the hand of Judah unto this day. So there's a revolt. Now go to 9, verse 1, chapter 9, verse 1. We'll read 1 through 7. And it says, And Elisha the prophet, Elisha the prophet, called one of the children of the prophets and said unto him, Gird up thy loins and take this box of oil in thine hand and go to Ramoth Gilead. And when thou comest thither, look out there, uh, look out there, Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, and go in and make him arise up from among his brethren and carry him to an inner chamber. Where's Jesus at? He's in a chamber. He's in the chamber. Okay, this is awesome. Then take the box of oil because he comes out of it like like the sun it opens or something it like a chamber and we'll see him so like a door opening and his brightness will come it's going to be amazing then take the box of oil and pour it on his head and say thus 
saith the Lord, I have anointed thee king over Israel. Then open the door and flee and tarry not. So the young man, even the young man, the prophet, went to Ramoth Gilead. And when he came, behold, the captains of the host were sitting. Now Jesus is Lord of ho- of the heavenly hosts. Praise his name. And he saith, I have an errand to thee, O captain. And Jehu said, Unto which of all us? And he said, To thee, O captain. And he arose and went into the house, and he poured the oil on his head. Praise his name. Jesus, and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I have anointed thee king over the people of the Lord, even over Israel. Praise his name, Jesus. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. I'm so excited. And thou shalt smite the house of Ahab, thy master, that may avenge avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord. We see this in the book of Revelation. God's The cup of the blood of God's indignation um, is in the hand of the wicked. All those who rejected his son and did wickedly. Um, killing the prophets and all of that at the hand of Jezebel and Jezebel I've done videos on this she taught Israel to uh, because she was married to the um, husband Ahab uh, wicked and they got other gods they got Israel to worship other gods kind of like the Israelites today in Kabbalah worship the planets which are wandering stars and so and they worship the sun and the moon against God's uh, commandment of not to do that. <laughs> but um, a wicked Jezebel and, and the king of Israel did that. And God's going to, and, and then killed the prophets that God sent to tell them to listen to, the, hearken to the word of the Lord. You know, listen to what my people, I'm sending them to you, listen to them, but they wouldn't. They would throw the words that they would speak to them behind their backs. And let's see what happens to those who don't want to hear what the word of the Lord says and do what he says. Let's hear what happens. For the whole house of Ahab shall perish, and I will cut off from Ahab him that hit, pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in, in Israel. Um, and we're going to keep reading because there's something amazing here. And I will make the house of Ahab like the house of Jero, Jerobim, Boam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Baasha, the son of Ahijah. And the dog shall eat Jezebel in the portion of Jezreel, and there shall be none to bury her. And he opened the door and fled. Then Jehu came forth to the servants of his Lord, and one said unto him, Is all well? Wherefore came this mad fellow to thee? And he said unto them, Ye know the man and his, and his communication. And they said, It is it is false tell us now and he said thus and thus spake he to me saying thus saith the lord i have anointed thee king over israel then they hasted and took every man his garment and put it under him on the top of the stairs and blew the trumpets saying jehu is king and in the same way the lord told me um and this is the part that the lord told me um first of all um whenever you um, look at people's channel like Sister um, Apostasy. Uh, her channel is called Apostasy, Apostasy in Times Ministry. Um, and you look at other channels that have exposed these false prophets um, like Kenneth Copeland or Joel Olstein or wicked people like uh, the, the Pope or anyone else who has, has come in and any of the um, people who murdered in the Colosseum, God's prophets, God's um, uh, saints, God's um, martyrs for Jesus Christ, uh, the 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 babies, you know, just like uh, the um, Her- Herod killed all the firstborn, in the same way that um, they had all of the um, firstborn in this land, or actually in abortion, was the same exact thing. They just changed the name of it. Basically, that's what they were doing. They were having them um, hand over their children to the wicked to give up their children which the, that blood cries out, the blood of the native Indians of all seven continents, all the blood that's shed in secret, all of that is going, um, all of those people are being exposed by God. What happens first? Well, the wicked tears 
and the wolves get burned up. Okay, they're, they're, they're burned up. And so you see the head of the serpent is false prophets or, or I mean, um, priests of Satan or um, uh, like Baal, priests of Baal. And the tell are the false prophets. So here you see, you know, God calls a captain. Okay, he was the host of a captain. This is a shadow of Jesus in the book of Revelation and in the epistle of Jude. The epistle of Jude, Jesus comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all of all the ungodly deeds of all the ungodly that the ungodly have done. So he is speaking against them. And um, so you see the captain, our captain is Jesus Christ. Okay, he's got, he's the Lord of hosts. And then you see the um, ones that had shed the blood and had, had got them to worship other gods. And the other thing that, that Jezebel had them do is worship nature, Gaia. Because these are gods, false gods. Gaia is a false god. And these planets that they worship are gods also. Well, they're not gods, but... They have dominions and whatnot, and we're to worship God alone and, and serve him, nor not to worship these planets or anything else that God had made. Um, but then the dogs ate her up. And right after that, you see them saying, you know, Lord, the, um, uh, that, that um, the Lord had anointed him king over Israel. And we know that in this new covenant with Jesus Christ he's the Lord over Israel the king over Israel and he is already crowned in heaven and we who believed we believed God's report about him um, we have to remember that we are um, crowned also but we're going to be praising him in the kingdom everlasting kingdom and um Oh, first I have to go to first Corinthians. Sorry. Sorry. Go back. Got all these notes. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, let's see here. Corinthians. I could read it. I think I have it written right there. I'll probably read it to you, but I like to look look it up. Oh, it's such great news, guys. Aren't you guys excited about Jesus coming? Praise his name. First Corinthians 15, which is where you can find the gospel, which it's awesome. And then we're going to go to verse 24. Then cometh the end, and I did this the other day, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. So Jesus is going to put down all rule, all authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. Praise the Lord. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death, for he shall put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is ex accepted, which did put all things under him. That he's expect, um, accepted of the Lord. So, and when all things shall be subdued, now that's the same thing that happened in Genesis. Um, that Adam and Eve were supposed to subdue all things under them all creatures all um things so now in this new um uh t testament this new covenant which was planned from the beginning jesus the son is going to subdue all things under him okay unto him then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him that god may be all in all praise the lord um and in fact, he is already sitting um, in the kingdom on the um, with his rod, okay. And we see that rod in Revelation, in Revelation two twenty seven. Hopefully, we can. Yeah, right here. Okay, so it says right here. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the the end. To him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with the rod, a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. Praise the Lord Jesus. <laughs> I just praise him. Okay, and then it just in 
chapter three, we, we see in chapter three, verse 11. And the thing about this that I want to, want to talk about real quick is, um, what has been going on? The Lord has shown me was they were trying to steal our crowns. Okay. And that was the time of when you needed to, when you need to be patient, you know, the patience of the saints, it was a time of trouble. So the word of my patience, I kept the word of his patience. So we're supposed to keep the sayings of God. We're supposed to keep the word of God and um, not let anyone steal our crown. That's where we're going to read right here. Behold, because we also have a crown. Jesus has a crown of righteousness. But I want you to see that you have a crown if you're a believer, born again, and called, chosen, and faithful. So it's behold, I come quickly. Hold, this is to the church of Philadelphia, by the way. Read the whole thing. I only have so much time on my on my videos, so um, I can only read part of it. But all of it is important, everything. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Okay, this part right here is so important because what has happened is, what does it say right here? It says, behold, I come quickly, hold that fast, which thou hast. What do you have? God gave us everlasting life. We have that. First Corinthians 15 says that we have that. If we are truly saved, it is ours, which thou hast that no man take thy crown. What is the deal with everybody talking about Corona and the crown? Well, because we all have a crown and I believe that their goal is always to take the crown of the saints to always upset and cause division and strife. What does Satan do? He comes to kill, steal, and destroy what God has given us. This is a done deal. We have a crown. He has given us a crown and that crown God says, and I'm going to put it right here, thou hast that no man take thy crown. Okay. So we give God all the glory, praise, and honor because he is on the throne, a throne on David's throne. Um, and he is a, has a kingdom of righteousness and he's bringing that righteousness with him. So, um, I just wanted to bless everyone with this and because the Lord, once I was, when I was just reading that, just, you know, this is how it happens. He'll give me some understanding and then he'll say, okay, this is what I want you to do. So my instructions are to make a big sign and play the trumpet song. I played you guys on a speaker and this is what I'm to, to go out to the, um, marketplace on um tomorrow and the next day and this is what i'm to do jesus is king blow the trumpet the same way that they did with jehu blow the trumpet and when they made david king israel and judah the northern and southern king kingdom were at odds before but they came together to make david king and jesus is on david's throne and um when we read the book of Psalms, I've said it before, you, you're, you're, you, that if he's anointed you to do it, when you read that, that is him, Christ in us, the hope of glory, um, speaking to the world that, that those words. Okay. And, um, there's been times that I've spoke it and I could feel the power of the Lord, the spirit and that power. I, you don't know what it's doing to the enemy. Okay. It's he, this is the time that speaking the word of God, when he moves you and you have to hearken to his voice because he, and not follow another voice when he moves you by the spirit, the way he did the apostles, the way he did his saints, the way he's still working now, because he hasn't stopped, you know, doing what he's doing, um, until all power and rule is under his feet. He's still Christ in us, the hope of glory. He's still doing it. And he's sitting on his throne in heaven. 
and the Father is, the Comforter is with us, and they're moving us, and their whole, and his holy angels are speaking to us. So we have to hearken to his voice and follow no other and do what he says to do when he says to do it. And this is my instruction. Um, begin at sundown and then do it again on Saturday. So this is what I will be doing. Praise the Lord. I hope that you all have a blessed day and look up because our redemption draweth nigh. I just know. I know it's coming. I know he's coming. <laughs> God be love to you, brothers and sisters. We're going to see him in the sky. <laughs> our king is coming. Our King, our Savior, our Lord. Agape love to you, brethren. Jesus is King. Give him all the praise, honor, and glory. The Son of the living God. God says, life is in my Son. That's his testimony about his Son. And that's a greater testimony, because that's a heavenly testimony. Praise his name. So all you saints... Blow the trumpet wherever you are and say, Jesus is King. Agape love to you. <laughs>